What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Educated Barfly. My name is Leandro Demon Riva, and we are going to be making a whiskey sour. And you know what we're going to be making our whiskey sour in? This awesome Barfly Mixology Gear set. We're doing the uh, Antique Copper set, which I dig a lot. It's very nice looking, very high quality, and uh, you should go in the show notes and click the links, because that's where I put all my gear. There's a lot of times where people have been asking me, like, where do you get your gear? Well, you can go into the show notes and there's always links down there for everything I use. Okay, whiskey sour. So this is going to be a abbreviated version of the history. I will obviously, as I do in every episode, I put like a longer description in the show notes um, with a little bit more, uh, a little bit more detail. But uh, basically, the whiskey sour is one of the oldest mixed drinks out there. So this is how it breaks down. I'm going to try and do this kind of fast. This is going to take a long time. Don't worry, there's a link to uh, the cocktail in the, in the show notes if you don't want to hear this. But basically, um, cocktails came about from punch. And so when people were first drinking mixed drinks, they were drinking a punch bowl. So they would go to a saloon and they would buy a punch bowl. And then a whole bunch of people would sit around this punch bowl and they would drink it for hours and hours until it was gone. As time progressed and, and the pace of life got faster, it was kind of looked down upon and sort of out of fashion to sit around for hours and hours just imbibing alcohol because people had better things to do. Um, so then saloon keepers, knowing that people aren't going to stop drinking, they just don't want to sit around for hours and hours drinking, started making these little one-off punches. And that were those were the first mixed drinks. And that's sort of where toddies came from and uh, fixes and sours slings, all of these things were before the cocktail. So the cocktail used to be its own mixed drink category before it was just a blanket term for all mixed drinks. Um, so um, the whiskey sour or the sour, which actually was first a gin sour, was first published according to David Wondrich in a Toronto saloon menu in 1856. And it was printed alongside another drink called a fix, which was also a gin, um, a gin drink. Now, to make things even more complicated, they were both served on crushed ice at the time. And they were both uh, lemon, simple syrup, and gin. And it was just the method by which they were served and the whether or... Like, basically, what separated one from the other was how quickly you were supposed to drink the drink. And I'm not sure exactly which was which. Like, I think the fix was supposed to be something that you sat and drank for a long time, so it was in a larger glass. And then the sour was something that you just dispatch really quickly, and so it was in a smaller glass. Um, and then a lot, the other thing that I kind of want to dispel here is that a lot of people think that the egg white is a modern interpretation of the sour, and it is a later interpretation of the sour, but the egg white actually started being used around 1890. So about 40 years later, the sours were, uh, egg white was added to the sour much like a fizz uh, and then just served in its own glass uh, or whatever. Um, and then on top of that, uh, what else did I want to say about the sour? I think that's it. Oh, and then the New York sour came up. So basically at around, in the same 1890s to 1900, there was a drink that came uh, to be known as the New York sour. You guys know it, the New York sour. And what that was, was a quarter ounce of claret, which is just a blanket term for red wine at that time. Um, that's basically what I got for you. We're going to get into making the cocktail, but I'm going to go get my ice. So give me one second. wasn't too hard. All right, let's get into making this cocktail. So first thing we're going to do is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and then two ounces of bourbon. Yes, you can use rye if you want to, but we're doing bourbon today. Okay, then we're going to switch the glass, we're going to switch the mixing tin and we have our cocktail in here and we're going to crack our egg in here. And the reason why is because if you try and crack your egg in here and you mess it up, then you just wasted all your ingredients. So we're just going to tap this real quick and we're just going to separate the egg white real quickly. Okay. 
That was easy. Set it aside, okay? And then we're just going to combine. And then I like to do what's called the 10-10-10 rule, which is basically you allow the egg to sit in the citrus mixture. You let the citrus and the booze kind of go to work on it for a second. And then what we're gonna do is dry shake it to emulsify it, okay? So you can shake this for about as long, I mean, you can shake it as long as you want because it's dry shaking, but 30 seconds should do it. I'm not counting in my head, so if you guys go, you went 50 seconds, then I'm just telling you that I'm just doing this by muscle memory, so. But 30 seconds, no more than that. If you can go, but you don't have to. All right, don't know how long that was. Now, second thing, I like to use one big rock of ice. When you use one rock of ice, you get better texture in your cocktails, but you, and you do actually get less dilution. Now, now, Dave Arnold says that you don't get enough dilution when doing just a rock of ice, so he adds an extra cube that he can kind of shake till that little extra cube dissolves fully and then this rock of ice is whatever. I don't, I don't, I've never noticed that to be a problem in my sours, so I don't add that extra ice, but I just wanted to let you know, full disclosure, that's something that you can do. And then we're gonna let the ice crack for a second and just sit in the mixture. And then we're gonna shake our big rock. Nice phone. Now, typically I don't double strain sours, but I did hear some ice breaking apart and I am very much a stickler about having ice shards in my cocktail. So I am going to get a double strainer. Um, if you don't hear it break up, you don't necessarily need a double strainer or if you trust the Hawthorne strainer when you close the gate, then you don't necessarily need one, but I am doing it because I am anal about that type of stuff. There we go. And then garnish with a little Angostura bitters. So we're just gonna, gonna get a dropper and just drop some Angostura bitters onto the top of the foam. And I think that's a nice pattern, but if you want, you can make some hearts by just taking a little um, uh, bar pick and then just kind of running all the way through. And there you have it, my friends, the whiskey sour. If I taste this, I'm going to ruin the Angostura bitters. I'm just gonna take a little, mm. It is tart, creamy. The sugar balances the sugar and the bourbon really balance that tartness out, but you still get that nice tartness. It's a lovely drink. Cheers, whiskey sour.